patient was a great patient, had a great result, has been wearing a stiff Vivera retainer, a great retainer made by Invisalign. And she tells me that she wears it every night, but she's noticing that it starts to become really tight when she puts it on at 10, 11 o'clock at night. When she wakes up in the morning, it's not tight, but she feels that throughout the day, there's a slight shifting of her teeth. Now, the shifting cannot be of much degree at all, or else that retainer wouldn't fit every night. And so what I'm going to tell this patient, and this is the modern physiologic approach I believe we have to adopt when it comes to retainers. I'm going to tell her to not wear her retainer for 24 to 36 hours. I want her teeth to be in the position that they're at at 10 o'clock, which is at night, which is probably fine. Then I'm going to make a retainer on that. This way she won't have that back and forth. Now, if you're ahead of me, you're thinking, okay, so you're saying you're actually going to let her teeth kind of revert a little bit before I make the retainer? And the answer is yes. And I always use the analogy that if you had a friend who lost 100 pounds and a year later they were doing a great job with their new lifestyle and they told you, I'm really concerned because I've gained five pounds back, you'd be like, dude, you lost 95. You still look amazing. Just try to keep it at this point. You wouldn't be like, what? Lose those five pounds. We have to not be in the business uh, as orthodontists uh, of trying to staple the teeth in that final position. And patients shouldn't expect that the teeth are going to remain in that perfect final position. What you don't want is to get into a situation where this patient was smart enough to contact me. But if she started to feel much pressure from that retainer, she probably would have just stopped wearing it, looked in the mirror. Her teeth would have looked great. They would have looked great for a week, two weeks, three weeks. She wouldn't even notice the shifting that would happen. That's why going 36 hours without the retainer should be no big deal if the case was treated properly. This is the way you have to handle this. Remember, anyone out there, if you have a retainer that doesn't fit properly and you're trying to jam it on your teeth, maybe a closing gap, uh, you are going to inflame the ligaments of your teeth. You may even push the teeth up. Think about this. Imagine, visualize somebody with very crooked teeth and they were to take an aligner that maybe was the final aligner in treatment. In other words, they reached into their box of aligners day one, they took out the 40th aligner and they were just starting the treatment. It wouldn't even come close to going on the teeth, but you know what, if they tried to jam it on, the teeth would, the ligaments would flex and the aligner would actually work its way up. The teeth would move a little bit and it would be really not the way to move teeth. It wouldn't work. The teeth would bounce right back. So if you're an Invisalign practitioner and a patient is a year or two out of treatment and their teeth still look great, even if they're not as good as they were at the end of the treatment, I'm sure they still look fine. Consider making a retainer on that. Watch out for patients who insist on getting retainers from the way they were at the end of the treatment. That also is someone who's trying to kind of retrofit something to do a quick and dirty realignment of the teeth. Tell them to accept the way the teeth are now. Now, if the teeth get really crooked, well, then they need retreatment. But I'm talking about people who have a little bit of shifting because they're human beings and they went without the retainer for a short period of time. Consider making a new retainer on that slightly regressed position.